guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Meg, and my YouTube channel is usually just about health and wellness, lifestyle, and motherhood, as I am a mom to one child. And I'm doing this video today, as you may know from the title, about budgeting with my dad. He is a financial coach, right? Yep. Okay, <laughs> because I did an Instagram poll a while ago about, you know, would you guys want to see something like that? And it really just spurred because a lot of people were asking me some budgeting questions, you know, how we budget as a family who functions on a single income. So I was like, you know who'd be perfect as my guest star? My dad. So um, if you guys haven't met him before, this is my dad. His name is Mike. He has his business as a financial coach and he has a fancy card. And I'm going to put all of this information in the link or the, sorry, in the description box below so you guys can contact him if you feel so inclined. We also got a handful of questions on my Instagram poll or like question box that you can do. And I've typed them out. I mean, I shouldn't like show all of them. They're anonymous just for you guys because I know some of the questions are personal and money and budgeting is sometimes a really personal topic. So we're gonna go through as many as we can. We can't get through all of them because there was actually more than I expected. Is there anything you wanna add or say hi? Hi, my name's Mike, <laughs> as she said, and I am her dad. I am a certified master financial coach. Uh, my favorite topic is money and budgeting and spending <laughs> and saving. And so I was really excited when Meg asked me to join her to talk about this topic today. Anytime I have um, any type of budgeting issue or financial question, I immediately I start to stress out because who doesn't stress out about money? And you know, next after I've kind of gathered my thoughts about whatever's going on, I'll just give my dad a call and he helps me out. And it's been like this for years. I never really noticed that I always called my dad because people call their parents for everything. But I specifically only call my dad about money. That's what we talk about. No, not how the kids, no, I'm just kidding. We talk about everything. But um, one of the big things that my dad helped me with that always shocks people is when I was in college, I had student loans, right? Shocking. Everybody has student loans, or unless you're my husband, Jacob. He had a full ride scholarship and he's modest about it, but whatever. I had quite a bit of student loans, $21,000, and a thousand of it was from interest. Not that all these numbers like matter to anyone specifically, it's just my numbers. But my dad helped me set up a plan to pay it off, you know, and it was just so much per month and to kind of battle the interest and everything. And what ended up happening is I made a huge decision to move home and complete the last of my NAU um, classes from home before I graduated. That way I could save even more money from the job I had at the time and pay it off even faster. And this is all from like the tips and motivation that my dad gave me about this topic. So. He definitely knows what he's talking about and you know he's a ma what did you say master what is it master financial coach master financial coach that just excites me hearing that like i want to ask him a million questions so we'll just jump into the questions i feel so fancy right i feel like i feel like i'm being put on a pedestal to answer these questions <laughs> because they're coming to us for advice and i'm like whoa the first question um that was reoccurring was how do you and Jacob budget? You as in me. These questions are more directed like at me. Some of them I think were directed toward my dad, but um, my dad and I were talking about this earlier and I feel like, how did you say it? The question was confusing, right? The question was very confusing because it says, how do you and Jacob budget on one income? And I, I thought, well, it doesn't matter if you have one income or two incomes or multiple income streams, the budget's the budget. So mm -hmm. what was the question that we think was really trying to be asked? Yeah, we feel like, Maybe the question is, how do you survive on one income? Because that's something that a lot of people strive for. A lot of women who are married and want to start a family want to stay at home with their kids. And that's currently what I'm doing. And I know that's highly strived for. So I always do my budget before the month starts. Right. And I account for every dollar that's going to come in and where it's going to go. Mm -hmm. And uh, you kind of have to do that in order to have a plan. Because if you don't have a plan, you don't know where your money's going to go. And then when you're new to budgeting, it's going to take, especially as a couple, it's going to take three or six months to get really good at it. Mm -hmm. And so I'd review the budget month or uh, weekly, at least every couple of weeks, mm -hmm. kind of see where we are and have an idea of what we need to adjust for the next couple of weeks. And the more you do that, the more you'll get used to just doing the budget the right way the first time. Or the right way is the wrong word. Doing it as accurately as possible the first time. <laughs> right. <laughs> 
dogs. Welcome, Max. Welcome to the video. Welcome, Shadow. So for Jacob and I, my dad just said, you know, weekly budgeting is good to get a good feel for where you're at. And Weekly review of the budget. Right, sorry, weekly review. Something that we noticed is that in order to be more successful with our budget, we have to do it together. The reason that both people need to budget is because we both spend the money. And I buy things for Nora or myself or I grocery shop sometimes without Jacob. So the fact that we are prioritizing and budgeting and setting up categories in our way, it can't just be one person doing that part of the budgeting. Jacob and I budget about twice, about every 30 days. It is something that we try to do as far as a weekly thing to review. And to put that into an example for you, for the month of 2019, in the January. month of January in 2019, we will be sitting down to review that. We should have done it already, but today is the 26th of December. And so any time from now before January 1st, we're going to go over what we think we're going to spend for the month of January on averages because um, at times our income does fluctuate. And you know, uh, bills will fluctuate as well. So we just take the average of everything. And then at the end of January, we'll sit down again and we'll go over what we actually spent. So we can kind of see trends that way and do better predictions and you know, just better planning all around. But also when we're sitting down to do January 2019's budget, we'll review December 2018's budget because we want to know what we did and where we were good in the budget, where we were not so good, you know, and just to know that before moving forward is really important, wouldn't you say? Or what, what could you agree. add? Uh, I think it's very important that you look at the budget not only for where you're going but what you've done and so the way you guys do that is exactly correct. So when you were before you do the January budget or as you're sitting down to do the January budget, reviewing December will give you some clues or some ideas as to how you need to move some things around right. for January. The money that's coming in is the money that's coming in for the most part. You guys have an irregular income but for the most part you know what that's going to be and you have to cover all of your necessities and then you can start looking at where where the extra money is going to go uh, but you're going to because you haven't been doing this for years you're still getting used to um, both the income and the expenses and so mm -hmm. the more you review what really happened the better you'll get at budgeting going forward it's not going to be perfect and then the more often that you work a budget and you fine-tune it the better you'll get at doing it yeah but the budget shouldn't be restrictive it should be about telling you telling your money what to do and telling you what you can do with your money so even if you have some debt and you're trying to pay it off you still need to budget for some entertainment for some personal time mm -hmm. for some we time um, and have that in there as part of the plans because otherwise you're going to get burned out and you'll possibly stop working on paying off your debt. Right. And that's something that um, in Jay and I's relationship, he is more of an extremist when it comes to getting toward a goal. And like, if I tell him, okay, well, this is what we have going on and we probably shouldn't go to the movies just this month or something, he would say, okay, actually, let's not go to the movies for the whole year. And that's not realistic. Like, we're going to go to the movies. We love Marvel. You know, that way. Who's your favorite Marvel character if you had to pick? Out of everyone, because I know Jacob's is Thor. Mine is usually Thor. Sometimes Iron Man, because he's like snarky. You know what I mean? Who was who would yours be? And my dad's also a Marvel fan and DC. Probably Hulk and then Iron Man. What? I never would have guessed you'd pick Hulk because he's smart. Smash. Hulk smash. <laughs> <laughs> now you get to have some personal knowledge about my dad too. When you become a couple and you put your money together. That is something that you have to adjust to because you've been spending your money most likely differently. And then when you add a child to the mixture, it becomes even more complicated because child expenses can be all over the place and they're always changing and they're always not planned, it seems like. I'm sure a lot of the time, you know, stuff for kids is planned. Like I always plan Nora's diapers and wipes. They're on a rotation to come every so often. But, you know, she might need new clothes because she had a growth spurt and I can't control that. And the more kids you add to the mixture, the more complicated it gets. So that's when you really have to buckle down and make sure you're planning on your budget no matter what. Mm -hmm. So that's why we always look at it without fail at the beginning of the month and the end of the month. And we try to do it right before the first of the new month just to make sure we're all on the same page and we know what's going on, right? Absolutely. Okay, this is a good one. What budgeting tool or format is best to use? the one that you're most comfortable with right really is the right answer there's plenty of budgeting tools out there you can do it with a yellow pad and a magic marker if you want you can do it with excel you can do it a lot of the banks have some pretty decent budgeting software that categorizes your income and expenses for you and you can move it around as it comes in and out That's cool. uh, but it's really whatever you're most comfortable with 
Right. Because if you're not comfortable with using it, you're not going to do it. Right. And I know my dad and I have talked about Wells Fargo. They have a, a budgeting tool and they have a money map. And if you have Wells Fargo, you might know or you might have seen those around online. Um, I've used that for a while. And when I first started budgeting as a complete newbie, I would download a template on Excel or Word, not not Word, what am I saying? On Excel from the internet, like just Google, I would say, you know, budgeting template, basic. And then it would come up and I would fill everything in and then I'd realize, okay, I now need to customize this for my, my lifestyle because it's just, it's not gonna be perfect. And then once I started to understand like how a normal budget would look, that's when I started just writing it out myself because I'm the kind of person, I don't know if you are, where I want to know where every single penny is going. Like I don't want to have something that's unaccounted for. I'm just like, oh, I don't know. I don't really care. Like I'm sure that was a gift card so I don't have to worry about it. No, I want to know where everything went so I know exactly where we're at and how we can do better every month, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Are you that the same way where you're totally. like, I need to I got to know everything. where everything went and I got to make sure that it's categorized correctly when it comes yeah, into the budget. Yeah, if it's not, it's like... <sighs> If I have software doing it by itself and it categorizes it wrong, I move it because it's really bad about uh, categorizing Amazon and Walmart correctly because you spend your money differently at those two places right. for sure. Sometimes groceries, <clears throat> sometimes a gift or something. There's also a lot of good free apps for budgeting out there. Every dollar is a great one that's free and you can pull oh, into your banking I software. I think of that, yeah. And there's plenty of apps out there that you can do right on your phone. Yeah. I didn't even think about an app on your phone. That is so smart. Maybe I'll give that a go. I'll link some of these, some of these uh, apps we're talking about and... There's a website that I use for a while too called Mint, and then mm -hmm. there's plenty of apps to help you um, just keep track of like what's going on in your bank account. There's cool stuff out there like that, and I'll be sure to link a few things below that my dad recommends or things that I've personally used that I thought were helpful at one point in time because it's all just trial and error. So until you figure out what you like, you know why not just test the waters? This next question is, if I have debt from multiple sources, how do I know which one to pay first? There are a couple of ways you can go about that, but yes. I'll talk about my favorite. My favorite is to put your debt on paper, smallest to largest, and start tackling it smallest to largest. Right. And why is that? Because as you pay it off, you roll the payment into the next one, into the next one, into the next one, and there's a psychological sense of accomplishment as you right. pay off that little one, and now you take the payment for the little one, and you apply it, plus the payment for the next little one, and you roll it together, you make more progress as you go through, mm -hmm. and you'll get through that debt really, really fast. And you can see that happening. And you happening. can see it happening. So you sure. know you're, you're checking off your list. Right. And I know it's really common for to-do lists, like say just a generic to-do list, people say you need to do your biggest task first, and then the rest of the day will be easy. In this scenario, that's not really the case, because you want to see that you're paying off your debt in a way that's you know reasonable to your budget at the time. So tackling your biggest one first isn't going to seem conceivable. It might take months before you check the first thing off. If you yeah. go smallest to largest, you start checking things off pretty quick. You feel like accomplish, you're mm -hmm. accomplishing something, there's some personal satisfaction there, and you get some momentum going. Exactly. And that momentum motivated really too. keeps you motivated, and then you're going to start finding some more and more money to throw at your debt. Mm -hmm. Because once you start going, it gets really exciting to see it go away. Yeah, and so what do you mean when you say um, finding more money to throw at debt? Because it's not like you get paid more if you have a single income all the time. The first thing you're going to do when you start to do a budget, if you don't do a budget right now, mm -hmm. is you're going to find money. You're going to find yes. money you didn't know you had coming in because you have no idea where your money's going. Yes. Um, so once you start to categorize it and you see where everything's going, you're going to almost give yourself a raise or you're going to feel like you gave yourself a raise. Right. You're going to find some money that you didn't know was going over here for something you didn't really need or didn't even want. Right. And then as you go through that budget and you start to find that momentum where I say find more money, you're going to go, you know, I might not need Starbucks this week. Yeah. Or I might not need to go as many times this week. And that's the little extra money. And you throw every little extra bit of that debt till it's gone. Mm -hmm. And that's a completely different feeling when you have no debt. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, as soon as I paid off my student loans, I made sure the day I graduated there was no loans and it was a little bit of a stretch like to make sure I did that, but that was just for me. I wanted to know that the day I graduated, May 13, 2016, I was debt free. I graduated as a college student debt free and like just to do that, it was like I did everything in my power and if that meant sacrificing Starbucks for a few weeks or a few months, I did it. That was what made me happy. And I think that's a big part of it, like you were it saying. It makes you weird not to have student debt. Yeah, I'm like, whoa, and now I have this payment I was making to student debt is now just going into my checking account and stacking on up to stay, which is cool. And you know, you can prioritize it and use it, utilize it in a smart way. That's why I, I mean, 
I feel like I did that. You I was did. pretty smart about mm -hmm. it because I had to buy furniture into the house that I live in now. But mm -hmm. <laughs> that's just some insight on how I've done things. And I think that, you know, a lot of people can relate to this because student debt is so common and it'll come up, I'm sure, again. Student question. debt is in the trillions in America. It's one yeah. of the, it's second only to credit debt and it's re, or mortgage debt. And it's it's ridiculous the amount of debt that's out there. And that's a whole different topic that we can spend a whole bunch of time on. Yeah, like we'll get into that. How to go to school, how to go to school debt free, how to go to school with as little expense as possible and still get a great education. Right. But I think that circles back to your first question, which is how do you budget on one income or how are you able to afford to be a stay-at-home mom? I think a big part of that is you don't have student debt weighing you down. You don't exactly. have other debt weighing you down. You have, I think I can share you have one debt. Yes, you can share. That is the car loan. Yes. That you you have a huge focus on getting paid off, but aside from that, you don't have credit debt, you don't have mm -hmm. student loan debt, so of course you're able to live different than other people who are living, fighting paycheck to paycheck just to make the student loan payment. Right, and that's because I started early. Just to make the credit early. card payment. Right. Yeah, as because soon you, as you start, later on you're gonna be better off, right? No matter absolutely. what. Absolutely, no doesn't matter, matter what age you are. when you start, just start now. Yes. You'll be better off sooner than later. And it's the same, I just feel like I have to relate this too, because you guys know that my channel is really has a underlying tone of health and we promote that constantly so like it's also especially with the new year rolling around we we i want to tell you guys just start now who cares that it's december 26th you know don't wait till the first to get in the gym like just go or to buy your healthy meals to prepare as soon as you start weeks from now months from now years from now you're going to be in a better place and that i like how um in this scenario budgeting and health and fitness pretty much go hand in hand because it's financially fit and actually physically fit. Yeah, there's one thing that you and I haven't talked a lot about with physical wellness and financial wellness. When you do have a lot of what debt weighing you down, there's an emotional and physical stress that takes over mm. your body that, that weighs on Absolutely. you. Um, you know, there's so much that you and I talk about with what you do and what I do that are so common mm -hmm. and that have so much in common, but this is one where you can just get that uh, that emotional stress out of your life and it, and it just affects you in so many other positive ways. Exactly. As soon as you stop stressing about it, which I've talked about this in another video, um, cortisol is a stress hormone and when your cortisol levels are high, your body will store fat. That's just how it works. There's a lot of science behind it. Cortisol is high from stress and all of a sudden your body starts storing fat. So it's not a healthy thing to be stressed about looking a certain way. It's also not healthy to be stressed about worrying about the budget. So if you can take stressors out of your life, you're going to feel better in every aspect of life. At least, I mean, I should say just at least budgeting and your physical health. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. One of the other questions that came in that we got was, how can I budget my money when my income changes each month? Right. So that's called an irregular income, meaning the income isn't the same every pay period or every month. Mm -hmm. So what you do when you're establishing your budget, if you don't know for sure what the money's going to be, the income's going to be next month, you take your lowest monthly average and you budget for that. You cover your, your necessities first. Food, clothing, shelter, transportation. Right. Cover those first and then you, you cover all of your debt next and then your needs and your wants. Right. Um, Budget for your, your lowest month on the 12 month average, and then you have a plan for everything else that might come in. Right, so it's like a, you know, you're planning for worst case scenario if you get the lowest end of your monthly income that's, that you've seen before happen. Then you would, you ultimately, you're not as likely, if it's like one time out of 12 months you have that lowest income, you're going to be better off. Like you're just preparing for worst case scenario there. That's what I was trying to say. Okay. And then those additional, when you have that additional in, income categorized, right. so it's the, the, the credit cards or the car payment or whatever, that's that you assign a percentage of the additional I income to that. So mm -hmm. because you don't know how much money it's going to be till you have it. Right. So 50% may be going to the Discover card and 20% going to the Visa and, you know, the other 20% are lost track. <laughs> the, the rest yes. of it going into your into uh, your savings account or whatever. Yeah, so exactly. it's just a percentage so that when you get that extra money, you know exactly where to put that. Exactly. Oh, that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. Okay, the next question we're gonna go over is how much money should I keep in my savings? And I put in like parentheses, you know, checking as well. Cause it's like, you know, it's not just one or the other. It's something you could think about. How much money to keep, how much money should I keep in my savings? So there's, I, I'm going to answer that question the way I think that you're asking it or the way I want you to ask it, maybe. So, yeah, okay, you say it. 
when you're in debt, when you're working on getting out of debt, you should have a thousand dollar emergency fund because something's going to go wrong and you don't want to have to go back to using a credit card or anything else and create more debt while you're trying to get out of debt. Mm. So the first thing you want to do is have a thousand dollar emergency fund. Then you leave that alone till the car needs new tires surprisingly because you can budget for it if it's not a surprise. And you work on paying off your debt. Once your debt's all paid off, then you want to have three to six months of living expenses in your emergency fund. Right. That's if something happens where somebody's unable to go to work or who knows what else might happen. That's your emergency fund covers three to six months of all of your expenses. Right. All the four walls and everything else. So that's your savings account. Now, your, your, the, your other income should have a plan every month. That's your budget. So that should actually zero out essentially your checking like what you would what you would call your, what you're, what you're referring to as your checking account okay yeah all that money has a plan it's all going somewhere even right. if it's going from your checking account to your savings account mm -hmm. when you're saving for other big purchases mm -hmm. you can do it a couple of different ways you can have just the one savings account and keep a spreadsheet in excel or what have you that says okay well i've got five thousand dollars in the savings account and 2,500 of that's our big emergency fund. Mm -hmm. And uh, 2,000 of that is um, saving up to make a down payment on the house when we're ready to buy a house. Right. And the other 500 is saving up to put tires on the truck when we need new tires, mm -hmm. whatever. You can just have that all piled up in the same place or you can have separate accounts for each of those things. Right. If you want to. It depends, it depends on, on how you too. emotionally deal with money. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. But some banks, I feel like, um, it depends where you bank, because some banks will charge you for to have accounts, multiple accounts. And it's just right. like, oh, that's a whole nother thing. Like, just but get you have money. to have a plan for that money, no right. matter how it's stored in the bank. You need to have a plan for all that money. Right, and I want to point out too, it's you know we're giving all these examples, and I know that there's going to be a lot of people watching this who are month to month. They're just living paycheck to paycheck, and these bigger numbers of having three. Would you say three to six times? Three to six months. Three, oh, sorry, three to six months of your income in your savings that seems like a joke i'm sure a lot of you are just like <laughs> in your dreams i'm not gonna get there but i need to i need to just say i i've thought that as well at one point and at the same time it's like as soon as i started just goes back to that same point as soon as i started saving as soon as i was more strict with myself and i had a plan everything was out in front of me it just became that much more simple and the goal became more attainable it just seemed like all right i'm actually doing this holy cow like as soon as that day happened i didn't even notice i wasn't living life too differently or too drastically differently, you know, until the point to where I got there, I was like, wow, that wasn't so bad. Here I am, I'm still living and I have more money in the bank now just because I took a few tips from this guy. So <laughs> yeah, just wanted to say that so you guys it's can keep that It's all possible, in mind. just incremental changes. Exactly, yeah. And the smallest changes can make the biggest difference, I feel like sometimes. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, and you have to stay, stay true to your budget, stay true to yourself and follow through, right? Gotta have a plan. Yeah, plans. I'm a planner, so naturally this this is almost like second nature to me to jump into the whole realm of budgeting. Although a lot of it still confuses me. I'm not an expert. So that's why he's here. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, definitely comment below questions or topics that you'd want us to cover because my dad is definitely capable. You obviously know he knows his stuff. I was going to say a curse word. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for watching. And do you have anything you'd like to add? No, thanks for having the time with me today. I enjoyed it. It is my favorite topic. This is probably the shortest money discussion you and I have ever had together. Yeah, we talk about literally like an hour and a half easy. No problem on the phone. <laughs> and I'm happy to answer any other questions or get more specific on any of these topics or any others because there is so much that goes around the topic of money. And so many people think it's a scary thing to talk about. But I enjoy it and I'm yes. happy to help. Yeah, my dad has a big heart, you know, you want to reach out to him. And even if, it's funny because when you you are looking for financial advice, your first thought is like, oh, well, I have to spend money to get financial advice, right? Like you mm -hmm. bring up, but think mm -hmm. about how much, with the advice he would be giving you, think about how much money you would save or mm -hmm. how much more better off. Not that I'm saying you have to pay my dad a pretty penny because like I said, he has a big heart. So just reach out to him if you have any questions and I know he'll be more than happy to help, right? Absolutely. All right, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. It'll probably be a vlog. What else is next?